Welcome to Adventures with Peps. We are back with a long overdue painting video. And as you can tell by the picture, we are doing the Warlord game Skull Swords for the Slain Miniature game. So we start off with the Army Painter Speed Paint set. We're using Crusader Flesh to get the first coats down. Uh, I'm recording the voiceover at a later date. So at some points we'll do some background for the characters. I have not played the game yet. So I'm not going to pretend to know the rules. I'm not going to even delve deep into the rules at all. I'm purely just going to talk about the figures. So let's get into it. The Skull Swords are characters from the 2000 AD strip slain. They are the personal soldiers of the Lord Weird Sloth Feg. That's hard to say. Slough Frot and the other Droon Lords. In general, the job of the Skull Sword is to act as brute muscle, killing civilians, looting villages, and bringing their master's sacrifices. They made their debut in the first ever episode of Slain when they wanted to arrest Slain and Yuko, the impious act of killing a time monster. Basically a huge kind of dinosaur type creature. The pair foiled them by escaping into the sewer system. Skull swords were next seen taking a third of the healthy children from a village as tribute so that they could be fed to the Lord Weird Sloth Feg. The desperate villagers were told that without their children there would be more food to go around. The Dream Lords liked to sacrifice criminals to the worm god Krom Kruak in a wicker man. When there aren't enough criminals to fill the wicker men, they make up the numbers with the skull swords, so even they aren't protected from their evil lord's plans. During the Horned King saga, which I've not started yet, many skull swords turned on their masters after Slain informed them that they were going to be killed once they had outlived their usefulness. A small number remained loyal, but only ended up being killed by Slain and his axe, the Brain Biter. Quickly back to the paint. As you can see, this speed paint is amazing. It picks up all the detail. I move on to the shields, and I'm using some yellow zealot. Uh, basically, I know for a fact that I'm going to end up with a lot of these models. There's at least another box of 10, and that's before you get any duplicates. And they come in groups of three when you're playing the game. So I thought I would match the shields as a way of working out who's in what group so they don't get confused. This initial group's going to be yellow, and later on I'll have a red group, a blue group, a green group, yada yada yada. I'm sure you understand the concept. It will just help on the game top. But I can just look at model and go, that's a group of three, that's a group of three. I don't really have to worry about it. These models take to the speed paint really well. And then I move on to Fire Giant Orange. Do the beard. I just really wanted a ginger, <laughs> ginger warrior. Um, I tried to mix up the beard colours. On the artwork, they all have brown hair, it's a bit boring, so I do one with ginger. You'll see in a minute, there's going to be like a, a sandy yellow colour. And also, I go for like a more traditional black, dark colour. Back to their background. Powers and abilities. Their abilities include slaughtering civilians, looting and pillaging. Not entirely sure they are abilities, they sound more like reasons to avoid them, but I guess maybe they're just normal warriors in the comics, they're not over the top strong or anything, which actually leads us into the next topic, their strength level, they are peak human males, so they're muscular, they're strong, but they're not over the top strong, I'm very slain on his own should be able to take down a group of three. I think in the game should be how it plays out. There's 
enough of them that you should be able to bring him down with weight of numbers. But overall, Slane should be able to cut his way through these guys. Their weaknesses is that their masters, the Droons, view these guys as completely expendable. They will kill them at the first possible opportunity. Especially if they need to appease their god. As far as equipment goes, they have for armor, they just have their shields, which you can see. They don't really wear much else. They are armed with swords, spears, and crossbows. The crossbow models look amazing. I can't wait to pick up some of them soon. I'm planning an order in the very near future, so watch this space. And as far as transportation goes, they use the sky chariots, which sound exactly what you'd think. They are basically long boats that can float across the sky using the way lines, I think that's how they're pronounced, which is the magical lines that crisscross the earth. And these guys ride on those boats. I think there is actually a story in one of the Slain comics where Slain hops on board one and has to protect a renegade Droon Lord from uh, Sloth. It's, uh, I hope they release something like that. I'd love a model that is like a floating longboat. Here you go, beards are done. We got ginger, we got a black beard, we got a sandy beard. I then use the black wash on certain parts of the different models. So on this one, I'm picking out his uh, skirt or kilt, I guess. And then I move on to the shoes on a different model. You'll just see me bouncing back and forth between a few different colors. Some get black shoes, some get green shoes, some get green belts, some get gray belts. I'm just going to keep bouncing back and forth with the colors until everything's filled in. So, you've probably noticed by now on some of the closer up pictures, they have a weird tubular mouthpiece, I guess you would call it. This is cards. Their faces are covered with a hair breath mask. They use this because their dream lords smell appalling and they have to use the hair to be able to breathe. And because of that, they have a little tube that sticks out that lets them get oxygen through. I find that hugely comical. It's probably why it in the actual artwork for these guys, they've all got the same color hair. I assume maybe they, they they use mammoth hair maybe or something weird like that. But I just wanted the pop of color. Ultimately my figures, and until Pat Mills tells me I'm completely wrong, I will do them in any color I please. <laughs> and the final note on these guys is that the Trisket and Skull Swords on their armor and shield is the symbol of the girl dig. Now the girl dig, which I'm probably pronouncing horrifically long wrong, it's spelled G-U-L-E-D-I-G. So the girl dig is a character from the 2000 AD strip, Slain obviously. He is a dark lord of the Cyphrons, which are one of the main ongoing villains. And they are a twisted race of pre-human aliens that sought to alter history by creating wars and using humans as foodstock. They already sound wonderful. So ultimately this guy that is the Trisket symbol with the skull, he appears throughout the comics. In one showdown with Slain, he actually uh, is betrayed by his own son, who is also half human, and the son summons Slain to fight Guldig. I really don't know if I'm pronouncing these words right, but after that showdown, the uh, this creature vows his revenge on Slain, and they ultimately meet up a few more times, especially during the King Arthur story, which is where I've seen him the most. He is notorious for altering time, and he is the pure reason that the skull and trisket symbol appear.
hair on these guys so much because he is basically the main reason they even exist. If it wasn't for him, the lands of Earth would be a lot more peaceful. So at this point, well, I've talked mostly about the lore to do with these guys. I think next time we're going to try and do some uh, of the characters. I think I want to try and paint Slain. Then we'll do the Dream Lords. Maybe we can actually have a painted game, which would be pretty cool. So watch this space. I hope uh, you'll enjoy the rest of the video. I'll play some music. And as always, I hope you'll like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.
Thank you.